Okay. So, uh, actually, I'm just going to ask you to start by saying your names and your and your film. Okay. I'm Erica Randall Bean, and our movie is Leading Ladies, and I'm co-writer, director, and choreographer and producer. I'm Daniel Bean, and I co-directed and produced and edited and did some music and, and did everything in post-production. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm so curious. It's such a wonderful lesbian love story and coming out story. And um, I have some questions for both of you, but I particularly, Erica, wanted to, wanted to know, does this come, any of this come from personal experience? It sure does. Uh, the coming out story, actually the scene where our main character, Tony, comes out to her mom is almost verbatim from my life. Christmas 1990. Three, I think, um, except for instead of saying I need a cigarette, my mother said I need a scotch, and uh, it it really it was great writing with my friend Jen, who I wrote the screenplay with. We we were looking at how we could weave stories of our lives and also fictional characters, and then kind of mishmash different stories um, together. So no one character is any one person from my life, but certainly the story of the two sisters, the mom being a dancer. Um, coming out, one sister getting pregnant, my sister did at the same time that she also outed me to my aunts and uncles for having a girlfriend and uh, because she was sick of kind of getting the brunt of all the abuse in the family and she thought, yay, my sister's queer, this will be great fodder for family gossip and, and everybody was fine, <laughs> it was really not a big deal and I think um, it's writing the story and making a film that celebrates the queer community but just through love and dancing. And the coming out story is there, but it's not tortured, it's not angsty, there's no drugs and blood and misery, it's just love. And I think that's been, I've been fortunate that that's been a lot of the story of my life, is that love is the, has been the main um, kind of guiding force, and I just happen to be open to loving anyone on the planet, and ultimately fell in love with this guy, and who I married and made the movie with, but I chose him out of 100% of the population, is what I like to say, and that's, uh, that's that's been um, another thing that's been so cool is to be a, 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 a couple that's married, but that so supports this love in this coming out story. So. That's great. I, I actually wanted to ask Daniel to talk about uh, your tagline for your film, Let Love Lead, sure. which uh, it seems like that's kind of what you're trying to convey. Definitely. I mean, um, when Erica and Jennifer got together to write this, one of the things that they were trying to do was... Uh, create a film, something in pop culture that was targeted at and for uh, kind of like the teen GLBT audience. Because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of that. It's it's nice to see that it, it's coming more to the forefront now. Yeah, with Glee um, and different Modern Family and, and mm -hmm. different things like that. Um, but there, there wasn't a whole lot of that when they started writing this. Um, so the idea of making a fun film that has gay characters that, that these kids can associate with um, but also making a film that is that is positive. There's no, there's really no swearing. There's no drugs and alcohol. There's no, none of this kind of stuff. It's all positive energy, moving love forward. But it's still sexy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean definitely. It's and there's dance and there and there's make out and there. I mean it's like it's, you know. But it's all love and love is what is leading the story and leading the family and leading, you know, everything about it. So, if there could be more people in this world letting love lead, you know, it Make would be place. a better place. That's great. <laughs> So as an ensemble film too, it's really great that you have, you know, the straight sister and the gay best friend, mm -hmm. and um, I wonder. So I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about the casting process and how you put this amazing cast together. The casting was really fun, and I mean we could go on for days about how the casting process. We'll try and keep it. We had you know, such concise, a blast but... doing our auditions, and our actors say they had a blast too. We even kept them. You know, almost I think all day every day, the two days we did the auditions. But anytime you have dance in an audition, it makes people have a great time and get to know each other pretty intimately, pretty quickly. Casting Melanie LaPatton, who plays our mom, was the first big kind of um, uh, like clincher of finding the chemistry, kind of building it around her. But we knew the other person we had to build the film around was our main character Tony, who goes through the primary um, kind of ugly duckling transformation. And casting Tony, who we cast Laurel Vale, who's uh, just a sparkly, magical human, she, she, we knew then we had to cast a sister who balanced with her, and then a love interest who, who shined. Um, and then finding someone... That in itself was really interesting because we, 
you know, we're auditioning all these people and we're auditioning them all over the country and then we start to realize how specifically they need to look like family and how their chemistry needs to work and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, we would have an actor who was really great but looked nothing like who we were, act who we were looking at for her sister. So yeah. then we were like, oh my gosh, this is going to be more difficult than we thought. But um, in the end, as it all came together, it, it was amazing how much everybody feels like family yeah. and how the chemistry works. The chemistry between Mona and Tony... Uh, Laurel and Nikki is streaming. phenomenal. I mean, it, it blows me away every time I watch them fall in love on screen. I start to cry every time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think also casting Benji Schwimmer, uh, who's um, from So You Think You Can Dance, one season two. I had watched that season and I loved him and I was writing the script with Jennifer and I had picked up the phone and I called her and I said, Jen, that's our Cedric. Turn on the TV. That's Cedric. And she was like, yeah, Erica, good luck with that. And I'm like, no, that's him. And so when we cast Melanie, who Jen had seen on What Not to Wear and on another show, and she said, oh, you know, we had kind of seen her from various angles and thought we've got to communicate with her. Mel said, yes, she loved the script. She related to it as a ballroom dancer and with a mother named Barbara who called herself Babara. And my mother's name is Barbara. And our mother's name is Sherry who calls herself Cherie. So there were all these wonderful things that came in line. Mel said, what about Benji for Cedric? And I tried to act cool and said, yeah, he might be all right. And uh, we, Instead of going, that's who it was. That's who it, you know, and, and Benji then read for us um, on Skype, and then he also came and auditioned, and he actually auditioned alongside Laurel and Nicole, and, um, and they were all playful together. They were such a, a great fit right away. We were just so lucky to get Family this from the get -go. dream cast. And then Shannon, who plays Tossie, the, the straight sister, she was a student of mine at the University of Illinois, and she'd been doing off-Broadway touring, and she's a triple threat, and that that actor needs to be because we wanted her to be able to sing the grocery store musical yeah. number and she does and she knocks she can it out of sing, the park. She can dance and she can act and she was phenomenal in the yep. film. Um, okay, I just have one last question. We were talking a little bit earlier and mm -hmm. I wanted to hear from you, Erica, as a, as a bi-identified filmmaker, mm -hmm. kind of you know what you think about the unique perspective that you bring to filmmaking and um, you know some of what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I, I was I was saying to, to Jenny how sometimes as as a you know bisexual feminist who's also um, who's married to a man and who who has these beliefs when when does your work become you know dogmatic if you try to be overtly political when are you just trying to do good storytelling all the stories that I write have a, have a queerness to them have a femme centric side I say a lot but try not to be overly political, but at the same time, I don't want to lose the messages that are important to me, that are really vital, that need the stories that need to be told in the world at large and in the, the gay community, but particularly my interest is in crossing over. And I, I often joke to my students, I'm a professor at the University of Colorado in Boulder, and I say that um, you, I want to be able to wear pearls to the country club and then talk dirty. I want to be able to fit in and then mix it up. And that's, that's what I look to write as well. Um, and usually comedy helps with that so that we can start to laugh at ourselves and move through our differences um, into understanding through that kind of visceral reaction of laughter. And I think it's a challenge to, to not always just try to wear that political identity, but to make work that also speaks with import and with passion about things that are often ignored and silent. So I feel that's my role. I'm fortunate enough to be partnered with someone who believes in that equality and believes in me. And, um, and loves my stories and, um, and is inspired to tell them with me. So we hope to do more. Well, it's a wonderful film and it's really exciting that it's yes. going to be getting out there so much more widely. We're and, really um, excited about it. Thanks for the, the interview. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.